Hi, I'm Laura C. George, and today I want to talk to you about the hourly wage. This is part of my lead up to the webinar, the free webinar, The Art of Pricing Art, that is coming up on October 30th, and you can find more about that below the video, and you can sign up for free below the video as well. Um, but today, we are talking about the hourly wage. Um, first, I wanted to start by explaining why we use the hourly wage in our culture. Um, and I know you'll, you, you know that across the board, um, every field uses the hourly wage in certain positions. Um, and it's a very useful tool um, for, for types of jobs and skills um, to be able to pay your employees. Um, an hourly wage is very useful. Um, but for art, I don't think it's very useful. Um, it came about in the industrial era, because before that, we paid people for a product, for the result they delivered and the value of that result. You might pay a blacksmith for a sword, not for how long it takes him to make the sword or how much work he put into the sword, but for the actual sword itself. Um, and then when the industrial era rolled around, people were making things in factories, and they were in these assembly lines where they put together only part of the product, not the whole product. Um, they were tying a ribbon on something, not creating the whole thing. Um, and so there had to be a different way to pay them. You couldn't pay them for the product they were producing. You had to pay them for the time that they were putting into the product. So that's how that came about. Um, and I think it's antiquated for the field of art. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, for instance, if you knit a scarf and it takes you 100 hours to knit this complicated um, knit into the scarf, um, and you've done a lot of research and a lot of design work to make this happen. It took you a hundred hours from start to finish. And then you decide to charge to um, pay yourself only ten dollars an hour, which is not a very high wage, um, but it's reasonable if you're, especially if you're just starting out, um, perhaps. Um, ten dollars an hour. And so you've spent a hundred hours on the scarf at ten dollars an hour. You have a thousand dollar scarf on your hand. And that's just for paying for your time. That doesn't include materials and other factors that go into pricing a piece. A thousand dollar scarf is probably not going to fly. Probably nobody's going to buy that. Um, that's a little bit ludicrous um, in most arenas. <laughs> of course, we do have fashion couture where sometimes thousand dollar scarves do fly. Um, but in the normal world, and for most of you, you can't charge a thousand dollars to your customer for a scarf. And that's fine. Um, so you have to find another way of pricing, because this way of pricing doesn't make any sense. Now another reason this doesn't make any sense, and yes, I have a second reason, there are multiple reasons that the hourly wage doesn't make sense, and the second reason is that more experienced workers get gypped. So if you are making a scarf, and we'll just use scarf, that's an easy one. Um, if you're an experienced artisan, you've been making scarves for years, you're a very good knitter, um, and you have a lot of experience on your hands um, and then and you charge based on the time it's going to take you not as much time as someone unskilled so someone new comes on the scene and they make the exact same scarf um, they're going to take twice as long as you um, to make that scarf because they're less experienced with it it's harder for them um, and then they would get paid more if they based their pricing formula on an hourly wage because they are taking too long to make the scarf. Um, and all that time that they put into it, they're going to want to get paid for it. Um, and so all things being equal, they would get paid more. Um, and you can mitigate that by paying yourself a higher hourly wage for being more experienced. Um, but at all things equal, you would end up making less than the less experienced person for the same work, um, which is just silly. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and I think the hourly wage kind of boxes people in um, to a number they that the object might not be worth. You know, your scarf, to, when, some, when a customer comes and looks at the scarf, they have a number in their head, and they might not know how long it took you or how complicated the stitch is, but they know from looking at the scarf what they think it's worth. And you box yourself in when you charge based on your hourly wage, especially if you use that as a big component of your formula, because you're kind of stuck in this number um, that you can't get out of it, even if the piece is worth more um, based on how your customer feels it's worth or even if it's worth less based on how your customer thinks it's worth and you definitely don't want um, to be losing money and you also don't want to be in a situation where you're charging too much and can't sell the piece because nobody thinks it's worth that much um, so both ways don't work 
Um, so those are the different, the three different reasons why I think it's kind of nonsensical to base your entire pricing strategy on your hourly wage, um, or even the majority of it, which a lot of people do. And if you want to find out what I do think is a good way to price your art and some alternatives to using the hourly wage as a main factor um, of your formula, um, then I've got this webinar for you, as I mentioned earlier. It's called The Art of Pricing Art. It's happening on October 30th. If you sign up now, it's free, and you will find out everything you need to know about pricing your art so that you can price it with confidence and you no longer have to worry that you're pricing the wrong way and you will make more sales. Guaranteed. Um, sign up underneath the video, right there at that link, and I will see you there.